are coming up at 9.30. We'll be chatting with showbiz reporter Angela Bishop, catching up on all the day's sport with some bonehead, and Rob will talk over everyone and laugh at his own jokes. That's tonight on The Panel. <laughs> Nice day for it. Oh! <laughs> Human clay pigeons. Another great new job creation scheme from Centrelink. Bring up a dickhead in you. And uh, welcome to the panel. And uh, Rob, would you like to interrupt? Yes, it's just that I've been to Bhutan. Yeah. And I mean, what's with what they're wearing over there? <laughs> they're called pantaloons and, and they're Italian. And, and my uncle's got this cement concrete sort of front yard and, 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 and all the grass is made of plastic. Yes, yes. Like, I wonder what it would be like to have plastic titties. <laughs> hey, Rob, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? Plastic titties, yeah? Yeah? Not, not going there. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me just say, that reminds me of the time when we were in Hollywood negotiating the deal with the castle. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Sharon Stone said to yeah, me... Yeah, yeah, you know, you know she's Italian. Like, her real name is Sharon Stanelli. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rob, Rob, are you laughing at my titties, yeah? Yeah, 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 because Italians love titties. I mean, the Coliseum was originally a strip club. <laughs> it's totally insane on this show. Um, we'll be back after the break. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be plugging um, a River Somewhere video about a million times. OK. <laughs> oh. Check it out. <gasps> Smart ass. <laughs> so where do you want to go to, mate? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't speak English. You what? I don't speak English. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. I think you do speak English. I think you'll find you're wrong because I don't. Well, what are we speaking now? <sighs> it's so obvious you don't understand. What a fruitcake. <laughs> Bloody foreigners. Let's face it, everybody gets old and I think everybody's face tells a story and if you've got a few lines and they're in the right places, it's because you've been happy with your life. <laughs> I'm Barbara Goodall, I'm 27 years old. Lots of my friends ask me what I use and I've never told them, which is a bit mean. But now they're no. <laughs> I've been using oil of Fred since I was 14 years old. Legal proceedings are currently underway. Avoid contact with skin. Hello, Dr. Schnoodle here. You know, a patient came into my office the other day and said, Doctor, have you got something to stop me coughing? So I gave him 13 packets of laxettes. He said, will that stop me coughing? I said, yes, you'll be frightened to. <laughs> wow! Ace oh. jeans? They're called acid wash. Wow. wow! Back in the 80s. <laughs> oh, my God! I didn't send you there. I'm so sorry. Are you all right? 
Yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right. Don't worry, I know what to do. We must keep the patient warm. Uh, really, I'm fine. Nonsense, you're in shock. Um, that's really not necessary. You need to keep warm. Now on Channel 9, we take an in-depth look at all today's news and current affairs as we join your favourite footballers, Steve-O and Mick, as they bring you Up To Date. G'day and now welcome to Up To Date, the show where we take the news and events of the day... ..and stick them up your date, little fella. Right up your date! Now, hold on, mate. That's how rumours start, you know, but that's what we're talking about tonight. What, we're talking about your date? No, no, no mate, rumours, rumours. Like uh, when Bob Ellis in Wonderland started saying stuff about Abbott and Costello and that, you know? Oh, Abbott and Costello are grass, mate, especially that fat one. No, no, mate, not them funny bastards, them other Abbott and Costello, you know, the dick brains in Canberra. Oh, them, mate, them. Don't, don't, we will get sued. Just like Bob Ellis of Wonderland did when he reckoned this woman right, he reckoned this woman enticed him to have sex to join the party. Yeah, I've been to parties like that. <laughs> But usually you got to pay 500 bucks a head. 500 bucks a head? Mate, you've been ripped off. I've only ever paid 20. <laughs> Mate, now you're starting rumours about yourself. <laughs> Everyone's still getting over that one about you and that Turkish guy in the sauna. I never heard that one. No, you wouldn't have. I only made it up last week. <laughs> it's a beauty, right? You're in this sauna. And this bloke comes in and you pull out a jar of strawberry jam and the towels come off. Mate, you go any further and I'll sue you for defecation, you bugger man. Mate, you know I'd never defecate your good name. I know how much damage a rumour can do. Like that one that was going around about me. It hurt me, mate. It blackened my good name. They said I shaved off all me body hair, mate. They said I covered myself in peanut butter and hundreds and thousands and lured some unsuspecting person into a storm water drain and begged them to lick me clean. <laughs> that rumour was sick, mate. It was vicious. It was perverse. It was ugly. It was true, mate. You made me do it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, they have a tetanus shot up. You bit me, you little bugger man. Rumours. Nasty, untrue stories that can cause untold pain and suffering. Or just a really shit house Fleetwood Mac album. <laughs> See you when you flip flop. the panel and uh, joining no, us now... No, it's just that, like, when we are in the Belize and little kids would come up to us begging for money. I mean, what's with it over there? Haven't they got Range Rovers? Yeah, 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 and uh, you know, you know, the only time that you see Italians driving four-wheel drives is when they've got a big uh, telephone over the top of it and they're delivering pizzas. But, like, hello? Hello, Rob, how about a pizza this? Pizza this! <laughs> oh, oh, OK, not, not, not going there. Uh, but that reminds me, uh, did you see that John Howard has announced his new cabinet? I wonder if Natasha Stott Despoia has a clothes rack. Yeah, and, and clothes racks aren't Italian. Oh, which, yeah, of course, which, of course, uh, reminds me, it brings us to our first guest, uh, showbiz reporter Angela Bishop. So, uh, Angela, what's going on in the world of entertainment? Well, I'm really excited about this week because I had a chat with Sting, caught a movie with George Clooney, had lunch with Kenny G, chewed the fat with Elton John, pushed around Christopher Reeve, tried to snog Brad Pitt, cut a record with Michael Bolton, told a few jokes to Marty Fields and had four of the Smurfs file out, Billy Snedden, Toilet Duck and Natalie Imbruglia around for dinner. Yeah, and, and she's Italian. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of the time and I was fishing trout fishing, actually, with Boutros, Boutros, Garley. I said, what's with the two names? Boutros, Boutros. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I've got two titties, so... Yeah, yeah. And they're not Italian. Oh, <laughs> no, they're Dutch. Right, right, OK. Well, th thanks for lowering the tone, guys. You know, we'll be back with more A River Somewhere, I mean, the panel, after this. <laughs>
Libra fleur skins. Bring out your animals. Bloody ass bandit. this morning just trying to work out what I was going to wear to this bloody wedding, you know. In the end, I settled on a trusty old tracksuit. <laughs> but you know, if you think about it, a tracksuit's like a good marriage. Yeah, it's comfortable, durable, and gets a bit stinky after about 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 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 Oh, Elaine, you know Elaine. She's my best friend, Elaine, you know. She's the one what's getting hitched today. Oh, yeah, for the eighth time. I swear, she's starting to sound like an ABBA record. I do, I do, I do, I do, I bloody do. <laughs> but she actually asked yours truly to say a few nice words on this special day. And I chose a very nice little piece out of the Bible, which I think is beautiful and most appropriate for a wedding celebration. Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> <laughs> makes me laugh. Weddings always make me laugh. Make other people cry, but they always make me laugh, you know, because it makes me think of my own wedding day. You know, what a day that was. The dress was nice, the flowers was nice, the music was nice. Oh, the bloke was all right. Can't remember his name now. You know? <laughs> and one of the simple ceremony, you know, just me, him and the prison chaplain. <laughs> his cellmate was there too, you know, nunchucker. <laughs> I was a huge bloke, you know. Oh, he was serving 20 years for murder, you know. Tattoos from ear to ear, you know. But he made the most beautiful little flower girl you'd ever seen in your life. <laughs> so when we was denounced man and wife, you know, we couldn't really walk down the aisle. We just did a quick lap of the exercise yard, you know. <laughs> I promised I'd wait for him. I promised I'd wait for him. Well, that was till I learnt that he was serving consecutive life sentences and I thought, bugger you, number 65329. <laughs> I left him. No, no, I believe, you know, you once bitten, you're twice shy for mine, you know. I will leave marriage to the experts in future, like Elaine. She's our little Elizabeth Taylor, I can tell you that. Oh, speaking of which, here she comes. Good on you, Elaine! <laughs> Show us your ring, love! Show us your ring! <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, madam. You've got three, six, nine, twelve items here. Can't you read? This is an eight items express lane. Oh, wait a minute. They're not mine. Well, whose are they then? In the tradition of the award-winning SBS series Hitler's Henchman and Hitler's Henchman 2, comes the latest in this stunning series about the German dictator's closest confidants. Beginning this Friday at 7.30 on SBS, Hitler's Handyman. Meet Otto Krutz, the plumber of Potsdam. His prices were very reasonable. Otto Krutz, oh yeah, yeah, Otto Krutz, yeah, 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 he unblocked Hitler's sink. Hermann Staus, the electrician of Erfurt. He offered Hitler after-sale service that was second to none. I remember he was a very quiet man, but he was very meticulous. Hmm? Hitler liked him because, well, you know, he was on call 24 hours a day. Don't miss this fascinating series examining the tradespeople that Hitler hired. Kurt Jürgens, the builder of Brandenburg, Ernst Guber, the locksmith of Leipzig, and Klaus Uzi, a handy carpenter and occasional painter. These were Hitler's handymen. Tomorrow night on SBS, it's history and home improvement rolled into one. <laughs>
Here at the Kaufman Institute, we're studying the effects that music has on plants. All right, who left the Celine Dion CD on repeat? <laughs> oh, yeah, Mr. Television, you turn me on with your big, hard knob. Oh, yeah, baby, you make me so, so hot. Monica, what are you doing? You told me to turn on the telly. I meant switch on the telly. <laughs> Roger Elliott is an idiot. He gets everything wrong. My turn. You moved. Did not. Did so. I'll shoot you for it. Okay. But I'm using my ball. Okay. Good evening, I'm Ian Goodings. And I'm Jan Event. <laughs> and welcoming you to the brand new Late Night Nerds. And may I just say good luck to the 21-year-old lingerie model who's now reading the Ferbst at Four news. Sweetheart, anyone who can do that with a hose and a golf ball really does deserve my job. <laughs> but speaking of which, lovely to have you here, Jana. Thanks, Ian. Mm. Well, coming up in tonight's nerds, Surprise in Darwin as local art critics describe a large reptile sculpted from excrement as a crock of shit. Cars waiting at an intersection given the green light. And a boiling kettle that attacked police claims it was just letting off a little steam. While police interview a man who wants to become a policeman. Yes, we wish him good luck with that. Now, Yana, have I told you how attractive you look tonight? Oh, no. Good. Well, <laughs> we'll be back with the late news bulletin after this. <laughs> Libra skins. Keeps out the animals. <laughs> OK, boys and girls, you know the rules to strip poker. Take your seats, please. Every time we lose a hand, we take off one article of clothing. Jesus, Bob, we haven't started yet, right? Yeah, baby! <laughs> I've got a feeling I've done this before. Uh, welcome back uh, to the panel. Uh, of sorry, course, sorry. Uh, two words. Game fishing, Ivory Coast. Well, uh, jo joining us uh, now, th thanks, Rob, is our very special guest, uh, the Treasurer, Mr Peter Costello. <laughs> Great to uh, be here with you uh, youngies, and uh, I'm sure you'll be gentle with me. Well, uh, of course, first off, uh, congratulations on uh, winning the election. Uh, now, just tell us again, uh, one more time, how good the Liberal Party is. Well, that's a good question there, uh, Tommy, old buddy. The uh, Liberal Party is good. Uh, in fact, real good. <laughs> You just need to look at our uh, record on waterside reform, uh, the education, international affairs, you know, Timor, that's real good stuff. Two words, two words. Work for the doll, great stuff. 
<laughs> Mr. Costello, I, I, I used to I used to work uh, for an Italian musician, and uh, and in fact you could say I used to work for the Joe Dolce. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I think you're a fascist, yeah. I mean, I really hate you. I mean, like, you'd tax my titties if you could. Well, uh, Mr Costello, it's, um, you know, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us tonight and to really get grilled. Yeah, you guys really made me work for it, didn't you? Yeah, well, uh, up next on the panel, uh, Santa will talk about wrestling and soccer and Rob will laugh even louder. Two words. Will not. <laughs> <laughs> He's hilarious. <laughs> we'll see you soon on the panel. Does the excruciating sound of your alarm clock make you angry enough to smash it? Well, now you can, with new disposable alarm clock. It's cheap and it's disposable. Now you can finally do to the alarm clock what you've always wanted to, every day of the week. The new disposable alarm clock comes in packs of seven. Uh, hello, Dr. Schnoodle here. You know, just the other day, a patient of mine rang me up at the sanitarium where I work and said, is there anyone in cell 52? I said, no, there isn't. He said, hooray, I've escaped. this game. Let's play another one. Good idea. <laughs> I saw that police academy on the weekend. Oh, what a shit film. I'll never make another one of those. Back in the 80s. Welcome back to the Home Center Shopping Show. I'm the Reverend Father Fryer Chitlins, goddammit. And now it's time for a word from the Almighty. And let me quote from Elastic Classic 7 of the Chitlins Home Center's Bible. And the Lord said, do not eat the apple. And the Lord said, hear me now, do not eat the apple. With the apple, do not grapple. Do not dabble with the apple, or in hell you will dwell. The smoke of tobacco will burn your soul and leave only a shell. To overeat high-fat meat, only yourself, you will cheat. <laughs> but there is an answer to get back on your feet. There is something for you which the Almighty can provide. No more smoking or fat foods, just let the Almighty inside. The Almighty doesn't care if you're a black or a whitey. So send your money now and receive the Almighty. A word from the Almighty was brought to you by Chitlins. Almighty low fat nicotine flavored corn chips with added extra salt to ensure a speedy delivery into the hereafter. Gee, I love different strokes. That little short guy is so funny. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> He's gonna be huge. Back in the 80s. <laughs> Scream all you like, but you can't stand in the way of progress! Ah, Igor! Now, the time is at hand! Pull the lever! Now!
you know, Paul, those little containers of orange juice with the green lids? Is there any way of opening them without spilling all the juice? <laughs> Well, we're uh, almost uh, out of time here on, on the panel tonight, but... <laughs> what? What? What, Rob? Nothing. Now, uh, Santo, I believe uh, you've got something for us tonight. Yeah, well, you know how I'm an Italian. Are you? I didn't know that. Italian. Italian. I didn't know that. You're Italian. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh, anyway, I've, I've, I've got American. this footage of Italian TV. Check this out. It's unbelievable. OK. Buonasera e benvenuto alla programma Hadiha Este il Pannelloni. E prego, prego, Maria, venuti bifca, pace e grete Maria Riffa. Oggi, oggi, do grande muccia titolina! Eleado, ancora, a sgrasso, pandeiano! That's appalling. Oh. And, and, and people watch that. Oh, titolinos, oh, hello. <laughs> well, maybe next week uh, on the panel. We might see you then. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. All right, see you later now. I see what you mean. And then she said that he should move out. Well, that's understandable. Yeah, after everything that he's put her through, it's understandable. Hey! Mm, yummy. You need a bullseye to win, pal? No way. Oh, Ooh. mate, you're just an ass. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Welcome to 60 Minutes. Well, the Russian economy has hit the skids. Prime Minister Yevgeny Primakov has hit the panic button. And surprise, surprise, President Boris Yeltsin has hit the piss. Tonight, in a world first, Mr Yeltsin is nearly sober during an interview. He spoke with yours truly and the youth of Australia. <laughs> Mr. Yeltsin, welcome to 60 Minutes. Da, da, 60 Minutes. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> yes, that's the one, Mr. Yeltsin. Now, if I could ask... I would you... like to drink some Russian vodka with me. Me, 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 me. 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 Mr. Yeltsin, I hardly think that encouraging underage drinking is appropriate behaviour for a world leader. Excellent. So what shall we drink to, huh? Let's drink the stiffies. Yeah, yeah, the stiffies! Ah. Mr Yeltsin, 44 million Russians currently live in poverty. Why don't you accept that your style of leadership has failed and stand down? That is impossible. Why? I can't even stand up. <laughs> stiffies! Um, all right, uh, Prime Minister Primakov has called on you. Now, Liz Babushka, please, won't you have one itchy, bitchy little drink with Boris? No, thank you. I've got a lot of questions to get through. Oh, come on, Liz, don't be a sack. <sighs> Are you chicken, Liz? <laughs> I answer, I answer no more questions until you share vodka. All right, just one little drink. Oh, хорошо. Now we play all the Russian drinking game where we ask each other questions, but not allowed to answer yes or no. You understand? Yes, all right. <laughs> you said yes, Liz, now you have to scowl. Wait a minute, I join you. Scowl, 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 scowl. Was that nice, Liz? Uh, I suppose so, yes. Yeah! Yeah! It's your turn to ask a question. Questions, yes, right. Um, Mr. Yeltsin. Uh, you're talking to me? Uh, yes. Him again! Go, 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 in the car, cos you're a pisshead. You just listen to me, you little needle dick. <laughs> I am a f 
fucking professional journalist, all right? Not like that bitch Tracy Curo, right? You think she can hold her liquor? She couldn't hold her piss if you tipped her upside down and stuck a funnel up her ass and popped her full of... Oh. Is she dead? No, 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 she's not dead. In the last we say she is gorich now. What's that? Shit-faced. No, 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 Okay, how does that feel? No, that's that's pretty good, I reckon, yeah. Fits like a glove. And so with great pleasure, I declare the National Academy of Hairdressing open. And I ask the principal, Mrs. Sutton, to cut the ribbon. person who drives cars that just sometimes stop and don't go again? Do you often have to replace the engine, costing your parents thousands of dollars and causing you untold misery on public transport? Then you need these two exciting products, oil and water. You'll be amazed at the difference these two products make, oil and water. Two more fantastic products from Spoon Fed Industries, just like your parents, only it's a company. I'm Ian Giddings. And I'm Jan Event. With the late news update. Well, John Glenn endangered the lives of his co-astronauts overnight when he tried to open the door of the space shuttle. Apparently, he believed that Meals on Wheels had arrived. <laughs> and Glenn continues to run tests aboard the space shuttle Discovery. The latest scientific study requires him to eat a dozen tubes of baked beans so that his fellow crew members can study the effects of cosmic gas. <laughs> And the route of the Olympic torch will take through Australia in the lead-up to Sydney 2000 has been announced. In just 100 days, the torch will crisscross the nation, coming close to every major town and city during its 27,000-kilometre journey. The route was designed by an expert in Australian travel, Senator Mal Colston. <laughs> And to royal nerds, and the Queen wants Prince Charles to end his affair with Camilla Parker Bowles. Royal watchers say relations between the Queen and her son have slumped to an all-time load, with the Queen now refusing to tuck Charles in at night, <laughs> read him a bedtime story, or take him potty. And to sport. And on Tuesday, the race that stops a nation didn't. And the weather tomorrow will be fine in the north, Fine in the east, fine in the south, fine in the west, and absolutely ratchet in Melbourne. Mm. Well, Yana, what's on for the weekend? Oh, well, on Saturday I was going to wear a pair of jeans with a nice knitted polo neck. Then on Sunday yes, I well, thought... Yes, well, good day, whatever. <laughs> well, we'll be back with more later on. Here at the Kaufman Institute, we've just made an incredible discovery. Jane, would you take a look at this? What is it? We've discovered Jane is incredibly gullible. Are you ready to eat your vegetables? <laughs> All right, then. You can stay in here until you are. <laughs> Damn it, I can't get him. He's too far away. You have a go. You're a crack shot. I 
Okay, ready? Ah! Oh my God, who are you? And what have you done with Penny? I am Penny. I'm Penny in the Iron Mask. If you are really Penny, then you would have a scar on your left arm. <gasps> there, 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 see? How did you get it? I got it ironing while I was still in my clothes. <laughs> oh, it is you! Oh. Wow, that's amazing. Where did you get the marble? I got it from the Leo catalogue. I was going to get the, you know, the Titanic propeller, but I couldn't afford the postage. Can, can I have a go? Sure. Uh, it's stuck. Well, where's the key? Uh, I lost it. Oh, my God. <laughs> You'll be stuck in there forever. Uh, You'll be a freak. Oh, my God. Leo, I'm ever married. I know, and freaks can only ever marry other freaks. You'll be the bride of Squid Boy. <laughs> I do. I could never love a squid. Okay, just calm down, retrace your steps, and you might remember where you put the key. Okay. Um. <gasps> What's that in the back of your head? Where? It's the key. It was in the lock the whole time. You dirhead. I am free. <sighs> Oh, Jenny, for liberating me from the accursed mask. I will grant you a wish. Oh, I wish for... Uh, oh, Leo. You can't have Leo. That's my wish. I just gave you your freedom and you promised me a wish, so I would like that wish. I would rather live my life as a freak than see another have my Leo. <laughs> So beautiful, O oh Penny in the Iron Mask. I could never take Leo away from you. He's yours. <laughs> Patch-tastic. <laughs> no! Had enough of all those crappy yank toys for your little rugrats? Then piss them off right now and support Aussie Made Toys for Aussie Made Kids. How about Tomo the Tank Engine? This cute little bastard even comes complete with his own refrigerated beer carriage. And can he knock it back or what? Or how about a realistic role model like Bacardi Barbie? Six Bacardi and Coke, and she's ready to talk to anyone. My turn to call you now, big boy. Check out the whole range of Dinkum Aussie toys at a bottle shop near you. And so, with great pleasure, I declare the National Athletic Centre open. And I ask Miss Georgie Fernandez to cut the ribbon. You know, every Thursday night I put the bins out, and when I go out in the morning, they're empty. Ah, oh, hello, Dr. Schnoodle here. Last week I went to the psychiatrist convention in New York. It was a great night. We all dressed up in suspenders and stockings, had a few drinks, put olives and caviar in our underpants, and then climbed onto the roof and threw live chickens off the top. A patient of mine said to me, isn't that a bit sick? I said, no. We knew exactly why we were doing it. <laughs> To some, he's a lone voice crying out in the wilderness. But to us, he's just that fat prick who always eats the last Tim Tam. <laughs> We're talking about Clench Tightly. And his insane rant. Thank yous, Ian and Yana. Animal exploitation. Should cosmetic companies test beauty products on cute furry woodland creatures? Or should we round up supermodels, put them in cages and let animals rub shampoo in their eyes? <laughs> 
I'm clenched tightly, and this is a logical conclusion. Animal liberationists are up in arms about cosmetic designers performing cruel and unnecessary experiments on tiny helpless creatures, and rightly so. Cruel and unnecessary experiments should be left at the hands of professional scientists. And cosmetic companies should stick to doing what they do best, making television commercials where supermodels turn into wild animals. But animal liberationists won't stop at spoiling our fun with laboratory animals. They won't be happy until we've all jumped onto the tree-loving, carrot-sucking vegan mobile, yelling, meat is murder, all the way to Soy City. They claim that as the dominant species, we shouldn't take advantage of our superior intelligence to maim, kill and eat innocent animals who don't stand a chance against our enormous brains. That's why we should only eat animals who are our intellectual equals, like dolphins or supermodels. <laughs> why let all the best meat on the planet be eaten by cannibals and Brazilian soccer teams? But until cannibalism is accepted as a practice in our society, we're just going to have to be content with making television commercials where supermodels turn into dolphins and rub shampoo on each other his eyes. I'm clenched tightly. And if you don't agree with me, I'll eat you. <laughs> oh, you've finished frothing at the mouth, have you, fat boy? You really are a, a very unpleasant man. Thank you, Yana. <laughs> and we'll be back with another late night bulletin tomorrow night. Good night. <laughs>